Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're looking at the fact that the court has stopped NBC from imposing fines on broadcast stations. Our guest this morning is Mr. Shegun Shokweton, Chairman, Accountability Condor. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Accountability Condor. Transparency <laughs> Network, I know. <laughs> yes, transparency. Watch word, accountability transparency okay now nbc has said okay not nbc the court has said nbc cannot impose fines on uh, broadcast stations anymore it used to be a very very worrisome thing but first of all let me just hear what you feel about this new development i think it's good news um i think it's absolutely brilliant in fact even though i would imagine that the nbc would probably challenge this you know, take this to appeal, and I hope, I actually hope they will challenge it, and I hope that it goes to the Supreme Court, and I believe that the Supreme Court will not rule otherwise. I, I think it's a fantastic ruling, and the logic behind it is simple and basic. Even though I am not a lawyer, I know uh, from my interactions with the legal process, um, um, and from my interactions with my friends in that profession, that one of the most fundamental natural laws of justice, fundamental, is the right to fair hearing. Um, and I've been, I've been told by my lawyers in many instances that the strongest of cases, um, no matter how strong the case of maybe, you know, um, a prosecution or whatever might be, um, it falls flat on its face if the person that is being accused of having done some sort of wrong is not given the opportunity to defend himself or herself, you know. Um, so this this right to fair hearing is a fundamental principle in law. And what hap what what we found as a culture in in lawmaking in Nigeria over the years is that um, um, regulatory agencies, regulatory authorities, law enforcement authorities sometimes are given powers that actually are judicial powers. They are given powers to adjudicate in a matter and rule on the guilt or otherwise of parties that they are engaging with. You know, so it's not just the NBC. So the same would apply to the Nigeria Communications Commission, you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria, um, even uh, agencies like last month, the Federal Road Safety Commission. Cases similar to this have been taken to court and the courts, I remember there was a court ruling um, in this regard, concerning last man road safety, you know, at some a couple of years back, where it was clearly stated that you, as a law enforcement um, traffic control um, um, institution, cannot impose fines on people without a court de de declaring the guilt of those people. You know, and if you if you check what happens now with last man, there are courts. They have either mobile courts that move around or they have courts in their premises. So they take you, if, if you, if you, if you um, uh, commit a traffic offense, they will take you to that court, they will impound your vehicle, which even is illegal anyway, but you know, they take you to their uh, premises, and then you are made to face a court. In most instances, those courts tend to turn out to be kangaroo courts, but at least they, 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 they maintain, keep up the appearances of following the proper tenets of the rule of law. You know, so this same principle is what the NBC, what the court has um, ruled on uh, with regards to the NBC now, and I think it's great. So um, without that being in place, what you find is that the NBC becomes all powerful and um, can, you know, just will by the simple wave of a pen, actually even take away the license of, of a broadcast organization, and this is not healthy for democracy. So I think this is a fantastic move towards deepening democratic process you know in nigeria of course as you know the media the press the media electronic print even the social media um you can regard all of them put together as members of the fourth estate of the realm and if you have a situation where they cannot um conduct their business uh without fear or favor then you are seriously undermining democracy and i think this ruling is a major step towards deepening our democratic uh, experience as a country yeah, but all these broadcast uh, stations uh, subscribed to some set of laws uh, which was were set by the 
uh, NBC to regulate their activities. So if you're, you put pen to paper and say, I accept, it's like terms of agreements, which we don't read anyway, mm -hmm. uh, but terms and conditions uh, that you have accepted that if I do these, I'll be liable like this and that. Don't you think it's, uh, it's getting too far to say that they should never do this anymore? W what will they use now to, to, um, to hold the people accountable for what they do, the broadcast stations? Yeah, I, I think it's an important point you make, and, and it's good for me to clarify. I also know that there are media houses, print, electronic, and otherwise, that um, go beyond their bounds and that act irresponsibly, that um, put out news without confirmation, for example, put out fake news, that put out inciting material. We saw that um, happen a lot during election cycles in this country, uh, 2015, 2019. Um, so, absolutely, there is a need to regulate, there is a need for somebody, for, for there to be some sort of body that will ensure that people conduct their businesses as they ought to, within the rules and uh, that guide that profession. Um, so, the idea is that they, you know, people should just behave as they like, but the idea is not that people should not should behave as they like. However, what this ruling is saying, and what I am saying, in, in the process of agreeing with the ruling, what I'm saying is the NBC cannot be the party that will declare the guilt of the erring party in this case. You know, So if a media house, if the NBC believes that a media house um, um, has, has uh, broken some of these codes and regulations, they have to have some third party, independent third party to adjudicate and confirm that indeed in looking at the details of the events surrounding that man, that the rules have been broken. And then, once you now find that the rules have been broken, that is when the fines that are imposed, that are declared or de 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 defined in the code of conduct or in the, you know, in the, in the laws uh, setting up the NBC can then be triggered. So, for example, you know, that murder, if somebody commits murder today, you know, the police doesn't just go there and say you committed murder and then take the person and go and kill them. You don't take the person, if, they, if somebody steals, you catch, even if you catch them in the act, you don't just take them and take them to prison. The law is clear, it has said that stealing is a crime, murder is a crime. But the law, in saying that stealing is a crime and murder is a crime, has also defined the punishment for stealing and for murder. You know, so what will then happen is that the police will take that person to court, and the court will declare the guilt or otherwise of that party. If the party is found to be guilty based on evidence presented, then the, the fines and um, consequences declared in the law will then be imposed by the judge. And I think that is what this judge is now saying. So if the NBC believes that a, a TV station or a newspaper or whatever has you know, contravened its, its regulations, it should take them to court. And then the court will declare whether they are guilty or not. If they are guilty, that fine that is imposed in the court can then become applicable. And it is the court that will even declare that fine. So, so I think the idea behind this is simple. The NBC cannot be a law enforcement of, officer or a regulator and also be the judiciary that is declaring guilt or innocence. You know, so again, I say fantastic ruling. Um, it's great for democracy. Well, um, to add to what you're saying, the presiding judge, Justice Rita, you know, when she delivered her statement yesterday, she said the NBC is not allowed to have administrative, legislative, and judicial powers simultaneously. As a trinity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Exactly. laughs> so they're not allowed exactly. to do that. But now, does it, doesn't that um, kind of like limit them like in so many ways, especially for the fact that people say they don't really, um, they, they can't really say the courts are credible. That's where we are now in Nigeria. Sometimes you go to, in fact, everybody goes to court, but you just never know which way it's gonna go and that the and proper investigation will be done. And the person who's supposed to be on top will be on top. So is it possible that now um, people go to court and they're not even credible? Because now that's what you're telling me that if someone, you know, if there's an airing station or anyone, um, they have to go to court and it's the court that, you know, is the independent adjudicator here. Can we even trust the credibility that... Even Mr. Shagun, Mr. Shokutan said that uh, sometimes they go to court and these courts are kangaroo courts. Exactly. <laughs> you could exactly. use the word kangaroo court. Yeah. yeah. So, so how yeah. can we even trust How much confidence do you have in the judiciary? Well, look, um, 
um, societies that function all over the world have all of these roles clearly defined. And the, 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 the hope in all of these societies is that as you progress as a people, you improve the functioning and the credibility of all your various institutions. And the judiciary is not different. Um, so at the stage of our existence today, we do know that things happen within the judiciary that raises a lot of questions and raises a lot of dust. And they give judgments that are um, sometimes incredible. You know, they are completely illogical. And even lawyers, professionals in the field will question some of those judgments. But unfortunately, we don't have any other place to go to. Um, we cannot, therefore, on the basis of that, uh, resort to self-help. We cannot. We can't resort to self-help. We still have to depend on the court. So the, the prayer will be that as we, in the uh, civil society space, like the media rights agenda, for example, that took this case to court, the, the, the prayer and the intention must be that as we are um, um, holding operators and regulators accountable, law enforcement agencies accountable, we must also, by the same measure and by the same token, hold the judiciary accountable. We must continue to demand that um, judgments that are read out or judgments that are given um, align with the spirit and the letter of the laws that on the basis of those judgments. So the, the work, you in the media, must also continue to hold you know, all of these players accountable. You must you know, highlight and spotlight stories where something funny or towards seems to have happened. So when we as a society collectively, all, all players within the society, within the space, begin to hold, uh, for example, judiciary accountable, hopefully with time, then things will improve. So you have the National, uh, National Judicial Council, for example, who is supposed to adjudicate when the judiciary itself is found wanting. You can write petitions, you know, and, and go there and demand that, you know, do you know that judgments can be reviewed? We if you demand, if a judgment we, we, demand, yeah. we do demand but yeah. we never really see you know anything being done about it Mr. most Shepard, times you yeah. go to you go to a, you know a higher court and it's still yeah. the same it's because because nigerians as 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 a culture we 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 still have a long way to go in understanding that we have rights that we can demand for we leave things to god too often we you don't hear uh, to god, god, god yeah god. but but my 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 concern okay a funny thing yeah. not not my concern now a funny thing is that uh, after the judgments of the various states that had cases in court uh, everybody was applauding the president that he didn't meddle into the affairs of the judiciary like it is something that everybody was expecting that he goes there influences judgments for the people that he likes that is where our judiciary is where you will be thanking a third party that should be independent of that, the, the judiciary oh, really? for, for being independent. And I, I, I was just looking at it and it was a shame to me because why would you even mention the president? He's not in the first place supposed to meddle into the affairs of that. But that aside, what would you propose as we wrap up now because uh, the time is really fast spent. As we wrap up, what do you propose uh, should be done? Should we have <clears throat> all these cases go to the regular courts, or should we have like something that is had in the in the sports uh, uh, sector, a uh, court of arbitration for sports? I think they call it CAS. Should we have something like that for the media, or should we go to the regular courts to get these uh, uh, problems or frictions between NBC and the media houses done? I mean, there are arguments on both sides of the divide. You know, there are arguments in support of having a special court. Um, the arguments in support of having a special court usually uh, revolves around the efficiency. The fact that if you go to, if you set up a special court, then cases can be heard much faster because they're not dealing with any other case. So, for example, in the issue of traffic violations, the traffic court, the mobile traffic court, that is all they do. So you get your judgment there and then. You go in, you present your case, and right there and then, the judge will move. You know, so that's... That's an argument in support of um, special courts, and you might say maybe that will work in this case. However, I don't see any urgency, um, particularly in um, cases of uh, uh, violations of the broadcast code. And therefore, I would suggest that these cases should be taken to regular courts, and um, such that you don't continue to uh, create inefficient administrative. Um, I mean, here we are talking about cost of governance, you know, as a country. So. You don't, if you set up a special court, that comes with a whole bevy of expenses, for example. 
And so some might argue that, yes, that's a necessary cost for speedy delivery of justice. But I think that that can also be done if you use the um, traditional courts. I, I think that what we should just do is to continue the, the debate and the fight to, for the credibility of our judiciary, to continue to hold them accountable, to continue to push all of the mechanisms that are available to hold them and ensure that they do what they're supposed to do. We simply do not have enough Nigerians writing petitions, for example. Petition writing is a basic and standard thing in most societies that work, but you never hear it here. If you write a petition, people will warn you, ah, don't do it, or if you do it, you know, this might happen, that might happen. So I think that just as a country, we need to develop a culture where we are deliberately, as just members, ordinary members of society, we're deliberately holding um, uh, all of these agencies uh, to account. Okay, uh, well, um, this is uh, where we'll wrap it up with you. Uh, we thank you, Mr. Shegun Shokuto. And Happy New Year is in order. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't seen you on the program the whole of this year. The whole of this happy year. New year. It, it feels good to say it, the whole of, the this, whole year. of this year. Happy All New Year to you. All of the 17 days of the New Year. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year to you. All right. Thank you so much thank for so being much. a part of the program today. Okay, Mr. Shegun Shokuton is the Chairman Accountability Candor and Transparency Network who was talking to us on the fact that the NBC, uh, uh, NBC's wings have been clipped, that they cannot uh, just arbitrarily uh, fine broadcast stations for any kind of violations. This needs to be taken to regular courts and then whatever is needed will be done. This eventually is where we're wrapping up today's show. A final word from you? Final word? Mm -hmm. No final word. Smile just more. Be happy. Oh, <laughs> Smile we're, more. In the, we're in line. Yeah. Just be happy. Take take each day at a time. Um, it's the 18th of January, so you still have time to still put all of your thoughts, all of your ideas. Because we talked about ideas this morning, and our quote was. Um, the quote basically was, there's no shortage of remarkable ideas. What's missing is the will to do them. And that's by Seth Godin. So just make sure that you have that will to push for what you want. Whatever you want, you can achieve it. So make sure that you have the will, the goal, the zeal um, to go out there and just put yourself out there and get all that you that is required for you. I'm buying her a microphone and make her a motivational speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that might be in order, but maybe in a few years to come. Yeah. Okay, that's all from uh, the tables of the breakfasts on Plus TV, uh, TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining our program today. Have a good day.